Hey friends, welcome to today's tutorial. We're going to use stencils and pencils to create something like this. <laughs> uh, yes, it was supposed to rhyme, but please feel free to use anything you have. Uh, pens, markers, paint pens, gel pens, um, I guess any kind of pen, <laughs> whatever you have access to, you're gonna be able to do it. Um, all you'll probably need today is some paper to work on. So I'm going to uh, work on this little B paper right here. You're gonna need some stencils. You're gonna need paint. Um, so I have these colors here from Target. You're gonna need like a little sponge or an applicator to put your stencils on and like a little paint palette or plate or something. And, um, and also a pencil. You can use a pencil or you can use a pen. I like to use a pencil just in case I wanna erase something. This is my Pilot OPT 0.5. As with everything, I'll leave links down below to the things that I can find links to. Um, and that will help you out if you wanna have a go. But I'm pretty sure you would have most of this stuff if you're into mixed media arts and crafts crafts like I am. <laughs> um, so let's just jump right into it. First I'm going to show you something very very basic but how to um, put the stencil down. Now here's the interesting thing about stencils and the only thing you'd ever need to kind of think about. You don't need a lot of paint. Is it, um, maybe a bit of a common misconception that you really need to load up your, your um, sponge with paint, but to be honest, uh, you just kind of want the paint to be even and work it in um, smaller amounts. You know, build up the color intensity if you want to do that because um, it's much easier to control that way. Now, I'm just, this page is literally just going to be my examples page um, and not, you know, we're not gonna, I'm not going to create a finished piece today. I'll show you some examples. <laughs> I just want to show you the idea and the techniques and how to add the body and um, things I would think about when I'm doing it. So, um, as you're stenciling, I would just lay that down. I'm only going to choose a few of these little accents on this page. I'm not going to do the whole thing. This is a um, just a cosmetic sponge. Also just got like a regular stencil here too. I want to show you that you don't have to be conventional about it. Oh, I should have explained what this is specifically for. <laughs> the stamped, uh, not the stamped, the stenciled parts is um, for our mermaid's tail because we're making mermaids today. If you, uh, if you didn't catch that. We're in the middle of Mermay and I'm feeling very excited. So um, I just wanted to share with this with you because I thought it was really simple in its approach and its idea and, uh, and even execution. So I thought it would be really fun to, to just show you because I'm sure I've got lots of stencils laying around that are beautiful. But honestly, how often am I going to pull out this feather stencil? Like not, not very often. I do think it's beautiful and I think it looks great and it works great. I'm going to use this one down here as well. I'm just going to give myself a few little areas to demo in. Please remember this is the demo, this is not the finished piece. <laughs> uh, for your finished piece I would just stick with one motif or, uh, or one something simple with your, with your stenciling. Unless you want to go full out but it can get a little confusing when you start to add the details. So if I pull this piece over, this is the, uh, the mermaid piece. It's exactly the same paint, exactly the same paper and exactly the same idea. You'll notice here that each of them have kind of little bodies coming off and the ones that I didn't want to make bodies, I made other little elements of like under the sea. So this is one of those conch shells that she's blowing into. These are little fish here. This is a little fish. Some of them I've done before are prawns. I'll get that one out. This was the original piece that inspired me to do it when I was playing in my journal. Um, these mermaids aren't as detailed as the other ones and they did this in pen, like a little Muji pen. And uh, I fully painted this page too, which I haven't done in a while, like a full on journal spread. Uh, but I really love this. I think it looks really, really graphic and bold and I just think it's such a great way to use a stencil that maybe you haven't thought about before. I know we are always using them to build layers in backgrounds and to add accents and details, but this is such a great way to feature your stencil. If you've got the most beautiful stencil design, why not make it your illustration, right? So um, this is all I've done. I've just simply added the scales. You can see there's little bodies over here. These are little fish. These are the prawns here. This little shape I thought looked like prawns. So I just made them that. And, uh, and yeah, this one has a bit of a different feel to this one in that uh, these all had the same kind of tails going off down this way and these actually had these little um, fish tails that I added but I love this accent over here. So we'll have a look at creating some of these types of things. I also have another sample here. This was a flower stencil and I thought it'd be really great if it was like the mermaids just like radiating out from the center. So the little, um, the little I guess, 
seed bits in the middle of the flower, whatever those are called. <laughs> um, they've become my little fish and all of these have become mermaids and they're, uh, they're my little geisha mermaids. Because this kind of gave me um, Sakura vibes, little cherry blossom vibes. So anyway, this is what I want to show you today. There's a very simple idea to getting the bodies on top of these things, but just making any of these shapes, the tail, uh, is also just as simple. So I just want to share with you the technique and the approach that I had to it. I might even need another one of these. I'm going to actually stencil out a few more things as well, just so I can show you some other ideas and how to fill other spaces. Okay, so I've got my images all stenciled out lovely on the page. Now I want to add my details. There really aren't any rules to this. You're not going to make mistakes, I promise you. Um, but here's the thing. If you've got a very detailed stencil like this or some kind of, you know, flourish that looks a little confusing, might I suggest that you do another one off to the side and then just kind of map out where you want your mermaids to go. Before I did this one, that's exactly what I did. I had done it on this paper over here here and I kind of mapped it out. I, I got the general idea of what I wanted them to look like. Now it's rare that I'll practice a piece before I do it, especially in these, um, you know, 31 day challenges. But this is something that I was really enjoying and I just wanted to make sure I got it right because I felt like I might want to teach it. So um, I did map these out here and I got the general idea. This she kind of looks like the Hamburglar and this one looks sick. <laughs> oh, this one actually looks like a, um, a skull from Coco. I like her. Um, but yeah, so I mapped this out here and got a general idea for it. And then when I was ready, I committed over here. So on the side, you might want to map something out like that. Here's the thing. Once you've figured out where you want the bodies to go, I would just put the body in as a line. So you can have a body going this way. You can have a body going this way. You can have a body going this way, whatever it is. The body is going to be a diamond shape, if you can believe it. Very kind of short triangle at the top and then a very long triangle down to the bottom. Um, so, and no matter where that is. So if this is curved over this way, you might want to draw your little arrow and then connect down to the bottom. Maybe that's a better way to think about it. Wherever you've drawn your line, draw an arrow. That's the direction your body's going and that's how it's going to look in the end. Now, when you want to put the uh, the neck and the head on, I like long neck ladies, don't ask me why, it's just it's been a thing for a while. <laughs> Giraffe neck ladies. Then you want to put the head on. I'm not going to go into how to draw a face because there are tutorials out there, there's a bunch, um, but let's just, for all intents and purposes, give them squiggle faces. All right, so they've got little, little faces here. Obviously, the decorations you add are going to be completely up to you, whether it's flowers or starfish or crowns. I'll go through a few mo motifs down here, but I also have the brush stroke mermaid tutorial where I go through how to draw some of those things as well. So we've got this body here. Now the arms, um, I think people might think are difficult. I'm just drawing lines again, wherever I want the arms, the longer, the better. I don't really care. Um, keeping a curve in them if I want them, if I want them to be on their hips, and I'm going to draw a line that runs parallel to that. I've been keeping this very loose because they're mermaids and you can blame the distortion of the water for why they don't look right. But <laughs> I mean, what are mermaids supposed to look like, right? So whatever you need to do to get the pencil to the page, I'm in full support. But this is, I mean, literally as simple as it is. And then I've gone in to add, I find that the details kind of help, um, help pull things together. If you're, if you're not so great at drawing the body, then be good at drawing the details, I think. Um, so I've just given them striped arms. Sometimes I'll give them striped necks. As I was doing it, I gave them a full striped body because um, I thought it looked really graphic. But then over time, I realized that what I really liked was them having like a little striped midriff, just like that. And I would probably erase out some of this line so it didn't look like that. Maybe give her a belly button. And that's as simple as our bodies are. Now, this is exactly what I've done for this example here. You can see that their bodies are that triangular shape. They've got the long neck, the little circle head, and the arms going off any which way. Even if you want them to hold something, just curve it around. They don't have to look real. I mean, does any of this look real? <laughs> it can be whatever you want. So make them really long, have them curved down, be weird about it. But um, this is the most simple way to get this body, I feel like. So I'll just go through it one more time pretty quickly and explain it as I'm going. You want the body to come off the, uh, you know, if this is the point, if this is the point you want to attach it to, it can go across the pattern and everything as well. It doesn't have to go any which way. But if you want the, uh, the attaching point to be here, you're going to draw a line, draw an arrow, 
and then connect back down. Then you want to draw the neck, whichever way you want the neck to go, and a circle head. Remember, it's all just lines at this point. You want the arms to go wherever they need to go. Add your details in. I don't know what you want to add. You might want to add a little seashell bra. You might want to add, um, you know, a t-shirt. You might want to add feathers. Who knows? Just scribble in your hands. They don't have to be anything. They could have crab claws for all we know. Um, she could even be holding like seaweed. Do you know what I mean? Like just be creative about what they're doing and then it's less, you're less focusing on the fact that she doesn't have a human looking hand, but more that she's just holding seaweed. Do you know what I mean? Like if the seaweed looks great, no one's looking at the hand. <laughs> um, so just tricks, tricks and cheats. Uh, we're going to give her a little face, a little bang. I want to give her a flower on her hair. And, uh, and that's pretty much it for the body. I really like the arms coming up, to be honest. I think it's fun. I think it makes it look like they're kind of swimming. It's, it's super simple. You, there's no overthinking this. If you overthink it, I don't know what you're gonna end up with. <laughs> so this is how we're gonna add the bodies on. Now, if you wanna know a few motifs to have a look at, when I draw shells, I like to just scribble them like this. I think that looks lovely. Um, when I'm drawing the, like a crown, I literally just layer these very jagged looking circles on top of each other and then kind of just squiggle around the outside of it. So that to me is one of those shells. If I really want to get detailed about it and make it look less, you know, unusual, I'll just do some scribbles on the side. And then I'll do that maybe a couple of times, just getting smaller, you know, next to each other. I might put some circles here as if it was pearls. And then if this, if this were on a head, like if this were the head here, I might even think about making the pearls come down and be an extra feature on her face. So any kind of crown like this, I feel like, you know, just scribble it through. I'm only showing you scribbles today. I don't know if I made that clear, but the, the point of this is not to be super pedantic. You're probably gonna end up with a really, really small design anyway from a lot of your stencils. So there's no need to know how to draw this perfectly. If you really don't like the scribbly look, then just scribble it out first in another color. And then when you go over it in your graphite, you can clean it up. But I mean, to be honest, I just don't think you need it. If you want to draw little stars, I'd recommend um, rounding them off. And there's no need to do the whole five point star thing and then go around it. You can if you want, but to be honest, like this works just as well. Sometimes I put a little um, dot in there and throw little curves off. No more, no rhyme or reason. I just do it. Sometimes I'll even put little speckles just to make it seem like this, the starfish has texture. For sea flowers, I mean, I'm doing pretty much what I did with this, except I give them a crazy amount of petals. <laughs> I think it looks more interesting like that. It almost looks like a sea anemone. To be honest, I haven't really given them much else other than that. It's usually just a mixture of these things that I'll put on there. It doesn't have to be anything specific. Everything under the water, you know, you can say it's distorted by light. You can say it doesn't really make sense. It's fantastical, it's mermaids, like there's no real point of reference. I just encourage you to keep it loose because I think that's going to l allow you to just start. So anyway, we've looked at a few things like this. Now let's uh, apply it practically as if we were gonna make one of these mermaids with these pieces. So I'm gonna start with this feather because I think it's probably the most interesting thing on here. I want her body to, I want it to follow the curve. So I'm just gonna go down like that. It might be better if I show you this way. Uh, I'm gonna draw the arrow just like this, connect it back to the base. I'm going to draw my neck and my head. Now I want her to kind of like almost be reaching for her own tail here. And the other arm just relax down by the side. Super long arms on this one, just what I'm feeling today. I'm just gonna give her a little bit of a face. I might wanna add that little crown on just like we did before. See what I mean? Like you're drawing so small, it really isn't going to matter. At this miniature size, I mean, anything kind of looks like something. So um, I'd say that's enough for me in the face. I'm gonna give her that, that little crop top I was talking about. So I'm just gonna give her lines up until about here. I'm gonna erase this part here so it looks like she's uh, not covered in scratches. <laughs> little belly button, maybe little abs. She's fit, she works out. Now here is where everything is also open again. Whatever details you wanna put on this is completely up to you. My advice would be don't outline 
your stencil. Just let the details fill the space, but don't actually fully outline the thing because it'll just look like you colored it. The thing that I think makes this look more interesting is can you see here, this, this touches the edge, but it doesn't outline it. This fills the space, but it's not outlined. None of these things actually outline. If you even look close enough, even on this piece, these scales touch the edge, but they're not outlined. So I would encourage you to, even the fish, you can see here, they're, they're full of detail, but they're, it's, the circle hasn't been traced. So then I think it looks less like a drawing and more like this interesting hybrid of like, almost screen printing where the color's done in stages. So it's if you pink has been put down first and then you screen print the black over the top. Um, I think that's what this is reminiscent of for me. I just give them a little, um, two little almond shapes as on, the, on the top, just to, you know, attach the body. Now for this whole thing, I would probably put these scales. I like to do them really small when I'm doing my finished piece because I like to have, you know, millions of them. I think it looks really interesting. But for the point of um, demonstrating, I don't have 45 hours today, so I'm just gonna put the scales on. Scales are simply U-shapes that connect. When you go to the second line of scales, you wanna start halfway through this scale and you wanna meet halfway through this scale and you just want to repeat that U shape over and over again. So if you're just thinking of trying to catch these points, the middle points, every single time, you will have a nice repeating scale pattern. And once you get really quick at it, like you don't have to do it many times to know how to do it. We also have the loop pattern tutorial that's up on YouTube. So if you want to check out that, um, that's the same thing. But this is basically it. If you want to even go in, like if you have time, um, just to go in and fill in all of these and leave like a little white halo in there I think that's a really fun effect and that's what I did here in this sample You can see each of these are being colored in. I think it adds a really interesting depth to it to the pattern But obviously only if you have a spare 45 hours because that's a lot <laughs> So these are scales and this is what I'm doing You want it you'll notice here. So let me use uh, let me use this as a sample here, an example. I don't want to um, start my my downstroke on the side and then end up with a downstroke on this side as well because that'll look like we're outlining it and that's what I think we want to stay away from so that we can really enjoy that like screen printed look. What you want to do is actually start your half circle there and then make sure that you leave it open on the side and then what you're going to do is keep repeating that. Now, you're going to have to cheat it at some points, like you can't hit the middle of every single one. Maybe at the end you're going to have to skip one, maybe at the start you have to skip one. But I think it's much, um, I think it's a much more interesting effect to make sure that the downstrokes aren't hitting that outside edge. Because if you lined this whole thing and it was just full, it would just look like you drew something and then colored it in with a flat Copic marker. You know what I mean? You could eliminate the whole need for a, um, a stencil or paint or anything like that. To each their own, if that's what you want to do, please go for it. But my, uh, my hot tip of the day is just to not put any details in that would outline the edges. Obviously some details are fine, like it doesn't matter if a part of it is outlined, but I would even encourage you like, um, see here, when I fill this space here, I just drew a shape inside it because I didn't want to um, actually hit the edge. So if there's something that you do want to fill a space, like if you just want to completely block out a color or do stripes or something like that, I would just say to make the shape again, but smaller in inside. Going back, I'm leaving these uh, spaces open on the side. You get my drift. I might even go in here and keep doing the same thing. I like to add the scales to a lot of places because I want this whole thing to look like her tail. Now at the end, um, I like to, on the bigger ones, I like to actually just draw these two diagonal lines, kind of like another arrow. Um, and I like this to be the part where we just put the, um, the fin detail. So not the actual like body of the tail, not, the, the, uh, not where all the scales are, but the actual, um, what's it called? The flap fin thing at the end. I like to put lines down there. Alternatively, if I'm doing a smaller one and like this is my, um, you know, this is my mermaid down here, I might go all the way to the edge and actually just put on my two little almond shapes, my two little leaf shapes down here, and that will be her tail. Or it can be a shrimp. 
<laughs> I like these, they look like Italian shrimps going, eh. <laughs> and then I put their little legs on here. You don't need to know how to draw the shrimp. The rest are gonna be up to whatever your imagination um, conjures up for you. I'll show you how to draw the fish, because the fish is funny. Um, you've got a circle here, so imagine this has been stenciled out. I like to put um, two lines that kind of give it this face area. Just a simple closed eye. A little frill, a little um, scalloped frill, a little love heart for its mouth. So if you looked on the side, it was just a little love heart. And then what I like to do is actually just take this and hit the lines kind of curved, following the curve of, um, of that to give it more of a 3D look. And then I put my two little leaf shapes on the end for a tail. Um, and it could be anything too, it could be a long version of that. That kind of looks like a guinea pig, <laughs> but you get what I'm talking about. Uh, these are the fish here in this example. You can see they're all done exactly the same way. You would probably look at that and think that doesn't look like a fish. Maybe this one looks like a fish, um, but yeah, it's, it's totally up to you. I find them really, really funny. Alternatively, you could just put strings coming off the edge of them and make them look like um, jellyfish. So if you want to put a line over this way, maybe two little eyes up here looking off somewhere cheeky and then just have the strings coming out. That might be fun too, to have jellyfish. Now the last thing I wanted to show you is to fill it with these um, kind of modern botanical drawings that we all really, really love to just doodle around the place. Um, what you want to do is actually draw inside. Like I said, you want to kind of mask it off because you don't want to hit the edges with any of this. Um, you could just use your eyes. I'm not saying you couldn't, but I like to mask it off. Um, I want you to draw just a stick inside and then just draw another one kind of attached to it and then it's basically up to you to draw the leaves so that they fill whatever negative space is left so I'm just going to hit this side over here this is see this bit over here I would put a bigger leaf in there and then come back if you've got two of these sticks next to each other, it's kind of up to you whether you want this one to take the short one and this one to take the long one. But your aim is to fill all of the negative space. So when you're coming back around here, literally to just to fill it. So again, over here, you might have this stick coming from here and you might have this one coming through here. Just filling the space with your leaves. So now if we wanted to do this one and you didn't want to mask it off with your line, I'll just show you an example here. I'm going to put the line kind of like the vein running all the way down the shape through the center. And then I'm going to fill the negative space with the leaves. And then you'll have filled the space uh, with your foliage, <laughs> your underwater foliage without actually hitting any of the lines. So, Let's just run through a few of the things that we've talked about so far. I'm gonna use this part here as the body, kind of give her a head that comes off here, giving her a very simple face. So you've got your circle head, you've got your body, you've got the triangle, the kite that kind of comes down and connects. Because I'm using this, I will just leave it open. You've got the lines that come off to be arms. You've got the details, because remember, if you've got good details, no one's gonna care about the understructure and then you've got the area where you put your scales or your pattern doesn't have to be scales but I'm showing mermaids so kind of makes sense remember try not to line the edges of your stenciled image and then you have the option to either make a tail with the uh, stenciled image at the end or you can fill the whole space with your pattern and then just add a tail on because some of the fun of, uh, of these things is actually adding on to the pattern. So don't be afraid to add little things on the side. Like if you want to add little flourishes, little accents, little like little things that just kind of escape off the side. I think it all looks kind of fun and whimsical. So I wouldn't be afraid. And then remember if something looks too plain, if you feel like she should be holding something, just go and look at, maybe Google things that are underwater and maybe even not. Bring things that aren't from underwater, bring them underwater. Um, like big old daisies she could be holding or, um, I like to play with scale and proportion, making things look uh, like they don't really make sense. I think that's a really fun place to live because no one can tell you you did it wrong. 
That's what I learned from Diane Reevely. I can't remember where she said it, but she said that basically if you uh, if you don't follow any of those rules of logic, then no one can tell you it doesn't look right. <laughs> like if you're doing it from your imagination, how could it be wrong? So um, I take that and believe that wholeheartedly. And it, it really is a freeing way to think about things. So cheers, Diane. I mean, she's giving me kind of lobster vibes. I don't know. I mean, I set out to show you mermaids today, but these ones are specifically turning into something, something extra. These ones are fun because I love all the flourish on the side. So maybe that's why um, they seem like mermaids to me. But in essence, these could be anything. These could just be the bodies for the characters that you want to come up with. Um, they could be tiny as well. Like they don't even have to... Um, you don't even have to have detail in them at all. You could take a super detailed stencil and be very, very vague about your lines that come off it and just simply add in your details. But I think it, it really is a fun thing to do just to give your stencils a bit more of a spotlight. Let them shine, let them live, give them their moment, their 15 minutes. Cause I'm guilty. I've got a whole stack of stencils that I just never use. And you know, I've spent money on them and they're just nice. But sometimes it's even a shame that if you do use them, all you're using them for is the background and like they're actually beautiful designs. So yeah, I'm just encouraging you to pull out your stencils and give it a go. So just to recap, cause I'm not gonna do a full piece from start to finish. We've got a stencil. A beautiful stencil that you love the design of and you just want to feature. We're, we're putting it down onto paper. Um, I'd recommend doing a bit of a mock-up first just so you can get used to uh, putting your bodies in places that you may not have thought before or finding a way to, to bring some balance and harmony to it. Don't let that put you off. Like, it, there's no mathematical science behind this. <laughs> it's all intuitive. You just feel it out. If you want to add something, if you feel like there's something missing on the right-hand side, then that's your gut telling you to put something over on the right-hand side. And uh, the best part about all of this, it's completely made up, so it's not going to matter what you put there. Um, we've looked at a bunch of examples today, a bunch of little motifs to draw. I've recommended that you keep them very loose, very scratchy, very scribbly, because typically, I don't know what kind of stencils you got, but unless you got those wall stencils for your home decorating, a lot of these little, um, a lot of these little patterns will be quite small when you end up going to draw on them. So nothing more is required of you in your illustration department other than just the general shapes and ideas of things. Because at the end of the day, you're gonna end up with something quite small and, um, and it really won't matter. Like these are just dots and circles. Their hair is just some squiggles. The eyes were the hardest things to draw. The nose and the lips, I just put the dot on the page and that was it. Um, so you can totally watch that process video of that mermaid piece happening. Otherwise, I hope you found enough um, instruction in this today. Let me know if there was... Let me know if you're going to give it a go and then if you have um, some perfect stencils for this. I'd encourage you to even maybe theme it a little bit. I've done all of mine in pink, I've just noticed, which is kind of disturbing because I don't even really love the color pink. I mean, it's nice, but there are so many other colors I could use. I think it just looked really nice with the, um, with the graphite. But play with your mediums as well. If you want to do a dark navy and, um, and do all of your scales in white gel pen, I think that'd be super effective. If you want to do everything in a, a light gray and then go over that with a black, I think that would be really beautiful, like tone on tone. I think there are a lot of fun ways to do this. You, I just Mostly I just want you to take from this that you probably have some beautiful stencils and uh, now is the time to let them shine. So, <laughs> hope you enjoyed the tutorial. I hope you got enough. I think you can see the idea here. And in the end, I think you're left with a really beautiful screen printed look of an illustration, which is um, just something fun to have in your, in your planner, your journal, your diary, whatever you like to create in, just on a piece of paper in your home. If you're gonna do it in a journal spread, might I recommend um, using one page as a quote and one page over here as your actual stencil and inverting the pages. So I've left this little border, but maybe I wouldn't have done that. I, I kind of like it, but um, maybe like flipping it over and having the spread be cohesive like this, grabbing a quote, grabbing up, this is literally just the definition of mermaid, but um, there was actually a really beautiful quote that I came across the other day uh, that said, a ripple can become a wave. And then it made me think a ripple can be, you know, also become a tsunami. Which essentially, if you pull a positive message out of that, it's that uh, no matter how small you think your contribution is, and no matter how um, how green you think you are, or how new you think you are to expressing yourself artistically, you may feel like a ripple in a very large ocean, but 
you will turn into a wave. If you keep going at it, if you keep rippling on, you'll turn into a wave and then eventually you keep waving on, you could become a tsunami of creativity that'll just knock everyone out of the water quite literally. So I want to um, just leave you with that quote. Maybe this is the quote you want to put with yours in your art journal, just a suggestion. Don't have to do it. Um, but at the end of the day, I hope you learned something and I hope it was fun. Until next time, thanks for joining me. Bye.